So we'll count you down from number 32 all the way to a number one. And let's start with the seller, if you will, the bottom feeder of the NFL. And I'll tell you what, Tom, it was hard because there are a few teams out there that you kind of point to. But at number 32, we have the Indianapolis Colts. And I think a lot of this is predicated off of the injury with Andrew Luck. The uncertainty around Andrew Luck, I think, is a big reason why the Colts are 32nd, because if you're... If you don't have Andrew Luck, I think it's pretty clear you're the worst in the NFL. Now, I'll make note of this quickly here as well, Cam. I don't think there is a, a clear Browns like last year team, or even, I guess, the Jets as well, that are going to be just god-awful. I think the difference between 32 and even, let's just say, 20 is really not all that big. And even then, 20 and 16 is not that large. But the Colts, Cam, they are rebuilding. Yeah. That, that is the reality of the Colts situation right now. You, you, you look at who they brought in. I like the Austin Howard contract that actually happened today. Yep. Eric Ebron, okay, Danico Autry, okay, but they, I think they lost more talent, at least in free agency, than what they brought in. Dante Moncrief is gone, Hankins is gone, Bostic is gone, Melvin, Frank Gore, all those veteran players are gone, and their draft I thought was, was good, not great. I thought it could have been a little bit better. I love getting Quentin Nelson, but I don't know if Darius Leonard, Braden Smith, Kamoko Ture were the best value. Now I think the Colts like those guys, obviously. I think Hines could be a good player as well. I love the Deion Kane pick, but... The Colts are just not a good football team right now, and that's okay. They're trying to be better in the next two to three years, not necessarily this season. All right, so we got the Colts checking in at number 32 on our list. Let's go to number 31 in our latest NFL power rankings here. We will stay in the AFC, and we'll go to Florida, Miami. The Dolphins here, 6-10 in 2017, made the playoffs a couple of years ago, Tom, but took a step back last I year. could see a scenario where the Dolphins actually end up as the worst team in the NFL. And I think they're definitely going to be near it. I think in terms of maybe even the most likely teams to have the first overall pick, if Andrew Luck is healthy, I think the Dolphins are right there because, can they moved a lot of talent this year. Jarvis Landry is gone. Ndamukong Sue is gone. Mike Pouncey, he is gone. All those key players for the Dolphins are no longer on the roster. Julius Thomas, Landry, you mentioned. Even Jermon Bushrod was at least a decent player for them, although not far from the best player. Yep. Lawrence Timmons is gone. And they brought in Robert Quinn and Josh Sitton, and then veterans and Danny Amendola, Albert Wilson, with a roster that is built to not win right now. So I don't, I don't really know what they're trying to do. I know they're trying to do a culture change, but for Miami, I think it's going to be a bad year, plain and simple. Yeah, the Dolphins are just a curious case right now. I'm they sorry, got Miami fans. Kilgore via the trade, as you see there. Osweiler, the uncertainty with the Ryan Tannehill rehab he process. Should be healthy right now. Should be okay, you would think. <laughs> uh, we'll see if the pass protection holds up for Miami as well. And by the way, the linebacking core needs a lot of help. We'll see what Baker can do. I think he'll be a key player there. There's been some buzz about TJ McDonald playing linebacker. Yeah. Minka Fitzpatrick might play some linebacker snaps, even though he's a defensive back by trade. All right, let's go to number 30 in our power rankings. And we will remain in the AFC East here with the New York Jets, who have quite a quarterback battle on their hands. Bridgewater, Darnold, and McCown. You know, the Jets were better than everyone thought they were going to be last year. So can they do the same thing again this season, Cam? Perhaps. Maybe. I think a lot of it depends on how soon we see Sam Darnold because the Jets' ceiling with Josh McCown at quarterback is capped. And it's probably capped around five or six wins like that that's as high as they're gonna finish now I think Darnold needs a year I think he's still pretty raw and needs some development overall but the upside is definitely higher with Sam Darnold so again the Jets are 30th they can definitely finish higher they'll probably win more games because they'll beat at least the Dolphins you think a couple times and frankly the AFC East is really bad right now outside of the Patriots spoiler alert yeah so you know, Tremaine Johnson got a big contract there. They brought in Teddy Bridgewater, who may or may not even make the active roster. I like Avery, Avery Williamson. That's a good pick. You know, Terrell Pryor could be a nice option for them. We'll see how Isaiah Correll and Thomas Rawls fare at halfback. But I just don't think the Jets are going to be a playoff team this year. So that's why they, they are near the bottom. Yeah. Sorry, Jets fans. Uncertainty at quarterback. We'll see how that shakes out during training camp and OTAs. All right, let's go to the next number here. We've got number 29 on the list. Our first NFC team here, Tom. The Arizona Cardinals, new regime of Steve Wilkes in town now, and a new quarterback. So the Cardinals got worse this offseason. Like, yes, they, they landed Josh Rosen, who I love. Yeah, that they brought in some more offensive line help. But especially on defense, like, look at who they lost. They lost some, not stars, but some notable players and guys like Kareem Martin and, and, and Josh uh, Morrow as well. But the big losses, they traded away Jared Veldier. They cut... Tyron Matthew. They, they lost Tremont Williams. They lost their best quarterback in Carson Palmer. They're banking on playing Sam Bradford a lot. 
that's not going to go 16 well plus games. It's not going to happen. <laughs> now, I, I'm a big fan of Josh Rosen, and yes, the Cardinals also get back David Johnson, which is probably their biggest addition, even though he was on the roster last year. But their receiving core is a giant question mark to me. Are you expecting Christian Kirk to be your number two receiver right away? That's kind of what they're built to it's be. It's a big ask. It's not going to be Bryce Butler. I'm sorry, Cowboy fans. He's, he's just not that good. The secondary really didn't get a whole lot of upgrades at all outside of they brought in Marcus Williams, who the Texans didn't even want. Yep. So I think the Colts got worse this offseason. I think that with a first-year head coach, they are rebuilding. The future, though, looks at least a little bit bright with Josh Rosen. And I know that they get back David Johnson. I just don't think that's going to be enough for Arizona to make it in the playoffs in what is a very, very good NFC this year. Larry Fitzgerald looking for that ring, and it's going to be tough. And a strong NFC West as well. It's, it's not going to happen for Fitz this year. I will be flabbergasted if it does. All right, we got the that's Cardinals. Word, right? Yeah, that is work. Good job. All right, nice. Cardinals at 29. Let's go to number 28, and perhaps a minor victory for the dog pound here. They're not dead last coming off an 0-16 campaign. Cam, I, I want to believe in Cleveland. I truly do. Don't we all? But how high can I act? How high can we actually put a team that didn't win a game last year? I think this is the ceiling. <laughs> like, uh, like they could definitely finish higher than this at the end of the year. But even with all those key additions, Carlos Hyde, Landry, Tyrod Taylor, all their all their defensive guys, T.J. Carey, E.J. Gaines, Demarius Randall, and so on. And I thought it was a pretty solid draft class as well, headlined by Baker Mayfield. Like, are you really expect a team to go from 0-16 to 10 and 6? Like that's, that's just that's task. asking way too much. Yeah. So the Browns definitely have the upside to be a way better football team. They could even win six games or more. But as we sit here before the season starts with preseason power rankings, I can't put them outside the bottom five yet. I just can't. Even though I truly deep down want to do that. I'm just not there yet, Cam. And for that, I apologize. Yeah, but they do have some sort of ceiling here that perhaps the other teams do not. I think. I think the upside is definitely higher because of all the new talent that they brought in. Yeah. They, yes, they lost Joe Thomas, but Hyde, Landry, Carey, Tyrod Taylor, even Baker Mayfield, they really overhauled their roster, I think, for the better. But how quickly will that roster qu click? And maybe most of all, how much do you actually end up trusting somebody like Hugh Jackson to be the guy well, that's that what guides you too. forward? Exactly. All right, we got the Cleveland Browns there at number 28 in our rankings. And we'll bring up a quick weigh-in here because, of course, the Browns were on the clock last draft at number one overall. And the question is, who will be the number one overall pick of the 2019 NFL draft? Mm -hmm. As we also ask, who should be the Browns' starting quarterback? I mean, it can't be Baker. I, I'm, I am pro Baker, but I, I think it's going to be Tyrod Taylor. Okay. All right. Well, that seems to be the case there. We covered that in rumors earlier today. All right. Let's go to number 27 in our rankings here. And we will take a look at the Buffalo Bills, perhaps a team that will be in the hunt for Kurt Warner. My number one team for Kurt Warner, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> stop it. We're not, All right. we're, I'm not engaging in we'll that stop. right now. We'll stop. I, I was hoping you'd take the bait. All right. I'm so not. we got Josh Allen with the top line uh, draft pick there for Buffalo. And you got A.J. McCarron and maybe he's the stopgap guy. Well, the, the offense also lost quite a bit up front in terms of the offensive line. Cordy Glenn is gone, which was expected. Richie Incognito's retirement, not so much. So here's the big thing for me with the Bills. Every year I like to pinpoint regression candidates, and these are normally teams that allowed more points than they scored and still finished with, with a record at 8-8 eight eight or better. The Bills are a prime regression candidate, and I don't actually know how much better they got in the offseason. I still believe that going from Tyrod Taylor to A.J. McCarron and Josh Allen, at least for this year, is a downgrade. Unless they want to play Nathan Peterman again. Three of those five that you see on your screen, folks, I think are downgrades. Bodine's oh, not good. He's Utelele terrible. is not good. He is I don't terrible. Think. Newhouse isn't good. He, Star was not good last year. The upside's at least there otherwise. Marshall House is not a guy you want starting. We, I keep telling teams that I told the Raiders that last year, and Raiders fans didn't want to believe me. Now they're on board with that. Bills fans, you're not going like, you're, you're, you're to like Marshall. You know, you lose Cordy Glenn, that's a big blow. EJ Gaines, I'm not super upset about. They did bring in Vontae Davis as well. The big losses for me are up front. Cordy Glenn, Ryan Wood, and Richie Incognito. Huge. Those are three starters. Now, I, I like Ryan Groy. I like Deion Dawkins. They can get by with Jordan Mills. But I think the Bills are a prime regression candidate. I think there's a big reason why they did definitely did not want to give up a future first-round pick this year because they think it's going to be higher than you might expect. All right, Buffalo Bills there at number 27 in our power rankings. The Bills did some trading with this team that's here at number 26 in our rankings. 
The Cincinnati Bengals talking about trading via the draft there, Tom. Cincinnati here at 26. Well, just overall, like the, the Bills and Bengals became best friends. Last well, they did. They kept trading out players. Preston Brown <laughs> goes from the Bills, and then he goes to the Bengals. A.J. McCarron and, and Bodine go from the Bengals, they go to the Bills. So kind of funny how that one worked out. The Bengals, at least offensively, I think even defensively as well, have the upside, I still think, in a down AFC to be a playoff team. Because if John Rosh is actually healthy, well, then maybe all of a sudden the offense gets going there. I love bringing in Cordy Glenn. The left side of the line is going to be a lot better than what it was last year. The issue is the right side is still going to be a pretty big mess. The secondary is talented. We'll see how the linebacking core fares. It's been an issue, especially when Vontaze Burpitt has not played. I don't know if bringing in Preston Brown and drafting Lee Jefferson are going to be enough on that end. Going from Bodine to Price is a massive upgrade because Russell Bodine has been a disaster Awful. for the Cincinnati Bengals. He has been one of the worst starters in all of the NFL. So, so there's some upside here, and there's upside, I think, with all these teams we're going to talk about right now. But the big thing for me with the Bengals is, do you actually trust Marvin Lewis? Because I, I sure don't. How can you? There's like, no way honestly. Yeah, and let, and let, <laughs> unless you're week 17 against the Ravens, I do uh, not trust him whatsoever. That's the second time you brought this up within the hour. Unbelievable. Yeah, one off air. I had to do it again on air. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. All right, Cincinnati <laughs> Bengals are at number 26 in our rankings. They broke my hearts last year. Let's go to number 25. We got the Giants here, and no quarterback in that first round, Tom. Went with Saquon at two. Maybe one last push with Eli. I think that's the plan here. I just don't know if it's going to be enough of a push because, frankly, Cam, Eli Manning hasn't been very good. Like, I, I know it's Eli. If we get to the playoffs, we'll have a different discussion. But Eli Manning just hasn't been a good player. And, yes, you brought in Nate Solder. You lost two key starters up front on the offensive line. I do love drafting Will Hernandez, but mm -hmm. and I, I like getting Alec Ogletree. And, I, you know, Barkley's going to be a great player for them immediately. I just don't think that right now, Cam, this is a, a playoff team. I don't think they're going to be as bad as 3-13 as, and 13 as they were last year, but I don't think they're going to be the playoff team we saw the previous season. That's, that's my big concern there. They had some locker room issues as well. I mean, especially the among the secondary The new coaching staff players. should help that, yeah. but even the secondary, I think, is maybe just a little bit thin right now. I, yep. Look, I do love Barkley talent-wise. I love Hernandez. I still would have gone with the quarterback because you need a quarterback for the most part to win games there. I was a little surprised that they ended up taking multiple defensive linemen, but we'll see how it all fares out. I don't think Kyle Laletta is the answer either. That they even drafted him shows you what they think of Davis Webb, by the way. Right, exactly. All right, we got the Giants there at number 25. If you're just tuning in, let's summarize our rankings so far. Colts at 32, Dolphins at 31, Jets at 30, Cardinals at 29, followed by the Browns, Bills, Bengals, and the Giants there at number 25. As you take a look at that recap presented by Autolist, head on to Autolist.com. Get that car shopping done in a flash. Really beautiful website. Looking for that new or used car out there. Get it done. Autolist.com. All right, let's go to number 24 in our power rankings here, Tom. And we will remain in the NFC with this team. And we've got the Chicago Bears 5-11 last year, but I'll tell you what, they are making strides. Watch out. I also want to believe in the Bears. Just like I want to believe in the Browns, I think the Bears have the upside to be that kind of all of a sudden surprise playoff team that no one really saw coming, kind of like the Rams last year. I do think, though, Cam, this is why the Bears are 24th for me. They are still a year away. You want to see Mitchell Trubisky develop more as an actual passer because, well, he was hamstrung by a god-awful wide receiving core, which is no longer the case, but with Trubisky overall, you really haven't seen a whole lot of great production because he never really had the chance to do it. I mean, he completed under 60% of his passes, seven TDs, seven interceptions. He didn't get a lot of help he, from he, I mean, he had no He had no help in the passing game. The ground game for the Bears, I thought, was, was pretty solid overall, but the passing game was just completely non-existent. I mean, he, he had a couple good games. Detroit he threw for 300 yards, although he did have three interceptions, but there were a lot of games below 200 yards for Trubisky. That's the concern on that end. So the upside is still there, but he, sh he needs another year to actually grow with a competent core around him on the receiving side of things. I think Anthony Miller, Gabriel, Allen Robinson, Kevin White, if he's healthy for once, is a very promising core. I just think the Bears are still a year away, but I do really like the way that they're developing overall. I like that defense a lot. I think I Vic Fangio will do a good job with those players there. So, all right, we got the Bears at number 24. Let's go to number 23 in our rankings, the sexy popular playoff pick from a year ago, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Safe to say, big time disappointment in 2017. Look, they upgraded their defensive line in a big, big way. Vita Vea, they, they brought in Vinnie Curry, Jason Pierre-Paul, Bo Allen, a bunch of other guys as well. 
the defense looks to be in better shape. But here's the concern for me, Cam. Are, how much better are they actually than what we, they were last year? And that was a 5 11 team. I think they'll be better. I, I like getting Ryan Jensen, but I have zero faith in Dirk Cutter. Like, uh, he has shown nothing to me to say, yeah, this is a guy who's going to get the Bucks to, to the playoffs. Is he next year's Mike Malarkey? I, I think that yeah, he should have been this year's Mike Malarkey. <laughs> That's what Because they both should have been fired. Yeah. I, the, the running game should be better, I think, with Ronald Jones. He gives them an actual impact home run threat there. I like investing a lot in, in the in the se- secondary overall. I like that Davis pick. But I, I think it's, I think maybe the Titans are a better comp where they're they're a pretty talented team, but the coaching staff didn't change, so why would they get any better? Right. So yeah, I like I, I like a lot of the key bucks players, but I have zero faith in that coaching staff. That's the concern for me. You know, we could be on this program right here, right now, Tom, in a, a few months from now, talking about how Dirk Cutter got fired. Could I, he be the first coach to be fired this year? I think Dirk Cutter makes quite a bit of sense on that end. I think if if you see a team like the Browns just be terrible to start the year, if the Browns start the year 0-8, which I don't think they will, I think the, the front office is going to go, all right, can we finally fire Hugh J- Jackson now? Mm-hmm. I mean, he's still ser- searching for a win he hasn't had in a long time. Yep. So if Hugh Street continues to grow, I think the Browns might, might be seeing the an early trigger. I think the Bucks though are definitely in that discussion. Why do I have a feeling maybe people are going to comment Jason Garrett? We'll see. Well, we'll get to Jason. We'll Garrett. get there. We'll get there. All right, let's go to number twenty-two in our rankings here. The Baltimore Ravens, two thousand seventeen record of nine and seven, should have made the playoffs. Didn't make the playoffs because they collapsed at the end of that game against the Cincinnati Bengals. So <laughs> no, there, there was a comment coming in from my boy Paul about Jason Garrett getting fired first. There it is. I told you. I know. I knew. I know my commenters here, Tom. <laughs> All right, so weird draft to be really nice and diplomatic about Cam it. Cam hates it. That's what he's really saying. Yeah, they are. exactly. I'm being very nice. But Willie Sneed, Michael Crabtree, John Brown, I'm somewhat happy with that. <laughs> I mean, it's better. It's better. <laughs> Offensive line is the concern for Baltimore, I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, Austin Howard just signed with the team today. Ryan Jensen moves on. Uh, and, you know, I think maybe they get something out of Bozeman there, the rookie out of mm-hmm. Alabama. Maybe he is the Might starter at center. Just because of the need. Honestly. So, for Baltimore, it's an almost reset there at wide receiver. And then the Lamar hype will continue to rise if Joe Flacco struggles. Well, I mean, he hasn't been very good lately. No. So, I mean, you look at his TDs interceptions the last three years, 52 TDs and 40 picks. Is that good? That's not good. Okay. That's actually really bad. So, I don't like where Baltimore's at. And frankly, Cam, I am a big fan of John Harbaugh as a coach. But I'm kind of just a little bit concerned about his job status because I don't yeah. think the Ravens, I mean, they're going to finish around 500 because it's the AFC, and that's, I think, about where these teams that we're talking about right, right now are going to end up finishing. But if they miss the playoffs again, like, th- does he get fired? It heats and up. follow up, if he does get fired, you would think everyone wants him instantly, right? I would like, think so. Like, like, if you're a team like the Browns or the Cowboys or the Bucks and you fire your coach, don't you, isn't Harbaugh at the top of your list? I like him a lot, but. Uh... For some people, it's getting a little old, the John Harbaugh thing in Baltimore, and perhaps it could be this year. We'll see. Baltimore Ravens are at number 22. Let's go to number 21 now. This one will go over well. Yeah. A D-minus draft grade for me with the Seattle Seahawks. Here they are at number 21. Their best pick, Tom, was Rashad Penny. There were only a handful of NFL teams this year that I thought actually got worse, and now obviously there are going to be teams that regress record-wise. But Seattle, they got worse. Like, you lose Sheldon Richardson. You lose all your key secondary guys outside Earl Thomas. Maybe you get Cam Chancellor back, but who knows on that end. You lose Jimmy Graham. You, and the guys you bring in are DJ Fluker, who's bad. You bring in the, the cast-off Vikings defensive ends to give you some depth. You bring in Ed Dixon, Barkevius Mingo. You brought in Dante Johnson, who we know is bad. He's awful. And you pretty much ignore the offensive line. Have fun starting DJ Fluker and Jermaine Effetti all year. Like, that's not going to go well for you. And then, and then you lose Sheldon Richardson. You lose Paul Richardson. Like, the Seahawks got worse. And the Seahawks are calling this a reset, not a rebuild. Cam, it kind of looks like a rebuild. It just sounds me. like wordplay to me. That's exactly what it sounds like. So I am genuinely concerned about Seattle. I think that, that they have a pretty tough schedule as well. I didn't love their draft. I think Rasheen Green's going to be a nice player for them. I think that their, their, their mindset is that they want to run the football more. That's why they took Rashad Pelley. Penny, that's why, that's why they took a blocking tight end in Will Disley. But they kind of forgot their offensive line is still in shambles. So their secondary, they're going to try and play Trey Flowers there. We'll see at, at corner. Mm-hmm. I, just, I think this is going to be a bad football team. Now, Russell Wilson will make them competitive. 
He'll get them to that eight or nine win mark. He'll save them. He'll he'll games. give them chances, and he'll he's an incredible player, and I absolutely love him as as a quarterback. He's one of the top five, at least in the NFL. But God forbid if Russell Wilson gets hurt, this team wins like what one game all year? Oh, I mean it's bad. That, Tom, it's bad. Yeah. So I mean, the situation is awful, and if you have a statuesque quarterback behind that offensive line in Seattle, whoever the backup would be in that case. It ain't going to be very good. So, yeah, I mean, will the Seahawks make the playoffs in 2018 with a healthy team? I still say no. Look, Russell Wilson will carry them to around that average mark. That's kind of where they're at in terms of number, in terms of number 21 on our power rankings. So with Russell Wilson, let's call them about an average team. But without Wilson Cam, it's a bad football team. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the complete 180 from what they used to be when that, that roster was stacked. Well, let's, let's think about it from a relative standpoint. We've been used to seeing this team – make runs yeah. in the playoffs. Yeah. So relative to the last few years, could be bad. So yeah. we'll see. So we'll see how, how Seahawks fans take that one because I'm sure that they, uh, they don't like that. All right, Seattle at number 21. Let's go to number 20 here. We've got the Washington Redskins. Alex Smith is in town now. You lose Terrell Pryor. You bring in Skandrick. There's Richardson as well. We'll see what Crowder can do here. This little batch of teams, as we discuss, are all kind of in that seven to nine, nine and, and nine and seven win mark, at least in my eyes. Cam, I am very curious how the Redskins fare. I could see them finishing as high as second in the NFC East. I could also see them finishing dead last if the Giants have a big bounce back year. And a lot of that does depend on what happens with Alex Smith because the Redskins were like, oh, we don't want to pay Kirk Cousins big money. And then they paid some pretty big money to Alex Smith, which didn't really make sense. I think there's a real argument to be had that quarterbacks are wildly overpaid and it might actually be smarter to build around a non-quarterback and build your offense in, in, in a different type of way. But the Redskins kind of did that with Kirk Cousins, and then they said, oh, we're going to throw money at Alex Smith. Right. So I, I don't trust them right now overall in terms of being an actual playoff team, especially in a very stacked NFC. I think that's the issue, Cam. You're going to see some NFC teams that are better than their AFC counterparts, but will finish with a worse record because the NFC is really strong top to, to bottom. Yeah, and you'll see that, folks, as we go throughout these rankings. A lot here. of NFC teams here. Yes, especially inside that top ten. All right, so that's a look at the Washington Redskins. Let's go into the teams here at number 19 in our power rankings. The Denver Broncos. So it's Case Keenum at the helm at quarterback. And will he be 2017 Case or Houston Texans Case? Uh, somewhere in between? Maybe. I, I would imagine, or hopefully better than Rams Case Keenum. But yes. I, I blame Jeff Fisher for that. The, the, <laughs> the stench of Def, Jeff Fisher gets you a pass. I'll mention this with, with the, the Broncos. If Case Keenum is just an average NFL quarterback, let's just say he's the 20th best one in the NFL, that's still, I think, a pretty substantial upgrade over what they had sure. last year. So if they can get that, maybe they can get closer to being an actual playoff team. I still love their defense, and I think they're going to have a great defense again because you added, you added Bradley Chubb because why not? Sure. That pass rush is going to be terrifying. We'll see how the ground game fares without C.J. Anderson. We'll see how big of an impact that, that Cortland Sutton can make as well. I think Denver in what is a very tight AFC West, and you'll see that here as we go through the AFC West teams, they can definitely make a run, but if they, you know, go, if they win one game in the AFC West, they're going to be picking in the top 10. If they flip, if they flip that around, they're going to be in the playoffs, obviously. So the AFC West is going to be the critical factor on that end for me, Cam, because Denver, Chiefs, Raiders, Chargers, all those teams are very tightly packed, at least in my eyes right now. All right, so the Denver Broncos check in at number 19 in our power rankings here. We'll see what they can do with Case Keenum at quarterback. All right, we've got a comment. We got Ethan Adams. What do you think the Raiders' record will be? Well, that's a great segue into number 18 in our power rankings. Thanks for that comment. We'll answer it here because we've got the Oakland Raiders at number 18. Tom, if you want to lay down your record prediction. They will be better than what they were last year, but they still might only win eight or nine games. Yeah, I'm thinking but, eight or nine as well. But eight or nine in the AFC cam could be enough. Is still, it was enough last year. Yeah. So it could very well be enough for the Raiders. The big thing for me is, look, they really overhauled their roster. They kind of got older as well. I mean, look at who they brought in. Rashawn Melvin. They brought in Doug Martin. They brought in Jordy Nelson, as we like to joke about. John Gruden's forming the ultimate 2012 Madden football team. Yeah. Like, that's what's going on here. You know, they, they brought in Derek Johnson on a one-year deal because he's old. They brought in Reno Giacomone because they needed more offensive line help. I actually don't mind getting Ryan Switzer and Mark Davis Bryant there. There were some notable losses in that secondary, 
And that secondary, at least for me, is kind of the big concern because I like T.J. Carey. I like David Amerson. Sean Smith had to go because of, A, he wasn't a very good football player anymore, right. and, B, had a whole bunch of legal issues. He's going to sh- serve some jail time as well. So the, the cornerback in that secondary group is the big, big concern for me. you got to get Gary on Conley healthy. If he is healthy, he can be your number one guy. Some other options, though, you need to have step up. Maybe it's Rashawn Melvin. I don't think it's going to be Sharice Wright either, Cam. He, uh, no, is not very good at the cornerback position. So secondary is certainly something to keep an eye on. I like Rashawn Melvin personally. I thought they had just an average draft. I liked some of the picks. I think Arden Key is an interesting one. I think eight men will make an impact there. Wide receiver out of Oklahoma State. And Ethan, who we featured on the broadcast here, Tom, also asking his, his, uh, for our thoughts on beast mode. At the running back position, how will Marshawn Lynch do with that offensive line in front of him? That's a great question. Uh, I am very curious to see how Marshawn Lynch fares this year as they kind of adjust the offense. I kind of get the vibe that John Gruden wants to run the football a little bit more this year. If that's the case, I think you'll see more of a committee. I think you'll see Marshawn Lynch get some work, and assuming that Doug Martin makes the roster, I think he'll get some work as well. I think they're going to try and keep Beast Mode a little bit fresh. He's not going to be a true workhorse bat that gets the ball 20 times a game, but I think especially later in the game, he's going to kind of be their closer. Maybe that's the the end end goal there for Marshawn Lynch. When the Raiders are up in the fourth quarter or they want to grind the clock early in the game, they're going to bring out Beast Mode and let him be Marshawn Lynch. Okay, so we got the Raiders at 18. Let's go to number 17 now in these rankings here. And we've got another new head coach with Mr. Matt Patricia in town with the Detroit Lions here. So what do we make of Detroit? A couple of interesting selections in the draft. Detroit is going to be Detroit again. They're going to win about nine games, and they're going to be in the mix for a playoff spot in a tough NFC, and they probably will end up coming up just short. This is who the Detroit Lions in. They've averaged nine wins the past four years. Made it to the playoffs in, twice of those, in, in two of those years, both of them in the even years. So... They're due for another one, right, Cam? They're due to make playoffs again. Well, they got to be, right? That's just yeah. the trend. That's, that's the trend right there. So, producer Harris hates Detroit for no reason. <laughs> I think the key that I noticed for Detroit this year, they are going to commit and try like hell to actually have success on the ground. They added LeGarrette Blunt. They drafted Frank Ragno in, in round one. They drafted Kerryon Johnson. They, they drafted Terrell Crosby. They are going to try. I don't know if it's going to have a lot of success, they're going to try to run the football and actually be a balanced offense they have lacked the past several years. We'll see how the defense fares. They need Ziggy Ansa to be the guy we've seen in the past for him, where he's actually a really good pass rusher, yep. and we saw on flashes last year. Maybe he's finally fully healthy. All right, we got Detroit at 17. If you're just tuning in, let's summarize the rankings. Then I saw a lot of people asking about the Cowboys. We have not ranked the Cowboys not yet. yet, so just wait. Let's get to the summary, though. Colts, Dolphins, Jets, and Cardinals, the bottom four teams. Then we've got 28 through 25 here, the Browns, the Bills, the Bengals, and the Giants. And then the next slate of four teams here, we got the Chicago Bears, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Ravens, the Seattle Seahawks. And then 20 through 17, we go Redskins, Broncos, Raiders, and Lions. And this summary presented by Autolist. Head on to autolist.com and get that car shopping done in a very quick fashion. Great website. All right, let's go to number 16 in our rankings. And right smack dab in the middle, the Kansas City Chiefs, now with a new quarterback. I am very curious to see how they turn out. Now, here's kind of my mindset with the Chiefs, is they overhauled their offense. I think there's going to be a little bit of a, of a learning curve with Patrick Mahomes. I have major concerns about that secondary. Now, they need to overhaul their defense a little bit overall, but I just, with no Marcus Peters, they only really brought in David Amerson. I don't think that's going to work out for them in the long run. Every year, Cam, we see at least four teams that made the playoffs the previous year that then miss it. Mm-hmm. If I'm looking in the AFC, I see the Bills are among them. The Chiefs stick out to me as an obvious option because if they don't win the AFC West, they might not make the playoffs altogether. So the Chiefs, for me, are a team that I like. The upside is definitely there. But with a new quarterback, some overhauled, overhauling on the defense, they might need a year to kind of reset and get themselves figured out. All right, so we got the Chiefs there at number 16 in the rankings. Let's get to number 15 now. And checking in, the Dallas Cowboys. A lot of people thought maybe they should be inside the top 10 here, but Tom, they're here at I, 15. I did see one comment that said the Cowboys were too high no matter how, how, how high they had them, <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny there. 
the big concern for me is that how is the receiving and the offensive passing attack going to look? Because you lost Des Bryant, you lost Jason Witten. I know that a lot of a lot of you know people are, are low on Witten or low on Des for differing reasons, but the Cowboys got worse at the wide receiver core. Like you bring in Alan Hearns and ooh, you brought in Deontay Thompson. That's not a better wide receiver core. And losing Des and losing Jason Witten, that's just absolutely not whatsoever. So. I don't see the Cowboys being a better passing offense than they were last year, but if the running game, having Zeke for all 16 games, that's going to help out of it. I think the defense will be better, especially if they get Terrell McLean, like I think they're going to. Their draft was fine, but I think in a tough NFC camp, mm -hmm. the Cowboys will win 9 or 10 games. And I don't know if that's going to be enough for them to actually make the playoffs. I think you're going to have to win at least 11 there to end up making the postseason. So if I am the Cowboys... I am feeling a little bit concerned about how I look for the postseason. I don't, their schedule is not going to be the easiest thing either. They did bring in some good talent. I think having the, the Zeke distraction cloud lifted from them is going to help them play. But Zeke came back late in the year, and they blew it. They should have beat the Seahawks, and they didn't. They should have lost to the Raiders and got lucky because Jeff Heath bailed them out by uh, forcing a fumble on Derek Carr. Who would have thought? Go figure, right? Yeah. So the Cowboys blew it last year. So I, I think there are some real concerns about Dallas. They are definitely a playoff contender, but I think it is more likely that the Cowboys miss the playoffs than they actually make the playoffs or even just make the Super Bowl or win the NFC East. So with that in mind, if the Cowboys miss the playoffs, Garrett's gone. Barring some kind of freak accident where all the quarterbacks get hurt at once, Jason Garrett, if they miss the playoffs, Cam, he will not be the Cowboys head coach for 2019. Boom. Heard it right here. There you go. All right. By the way, commenter on YouTube, produced by Germ. He's disappointed in me. I think he meant to say he's disappointed in you, Tom. Uh, well, well, no, why would you assume that? <laughs> well, because you've been giving the analysis on the Cowboys here, and he's kind of chiming in along with what you've been saying. So It's your fault, Cam. Yeah, whatever. I'm Tom. He's Hey, Tom. produced by Germ, by the way. Cowboys, top five team. Easy. Are we best friends now? I'm just a people pleaser. <laughs> Another question. Will the Cowboys defense be top ten this year? I'll say this. That secondary intrigues me. But can they get enough pass rush? What you might see happen is the Cowboys rank as a top 10 defense because their run game keeps their team off, keeps the defense it's off. One of those deals. End up ranking up in yeah. there as well. All right, Dallas Cowboys at number 15 in our rankings. Let's go to a number 14 here. And at this number, we've got the Houston Texans. And I'll tell you what, maybe one of the higher ceilings and lower floors in the NFL. I think that's a great way to put it. Yeah. Because, I mean, we saw their floor last year. They didn't have Deshaun Watson, and the offense was a disaster. The defense was banged up as well. I am not quite ready to fully buy into the Houston Texans for one particular reason, or two, I should say. A, the injuries will always concern me. B, that offensive line is not going to be very good. No. I, and I know that Deshaun Watson's a great athlete. He's mobile. But I keep getting visions of RG3 in my head where he looked really good his first year, got hurt, the offensive line didn't do a good enough job, and he was never the same player. So the receiving core is good for the Texans. The ground game should be good as well. I liked, I liked, I liked a lot of what we saw from Deshaun Watson. But if the offensive line doesn't improve, it's not going to be enough for Houston. Now, I think they can make some noise. They can be one of those teams that missed the playoffs last year and then get in. And they can definitely finish first or second in the AFC South. But Houston... With that offensive line un, you know, under construction, Zach Fulton's going to be a key player for them. I don't really want to play Central Henderson ever. He's awful. I just have <laughs> some concerns there. I did like getting Justin Reed. We'll see how Martinez Rankin fares early. I think tight end is still a big need for them. I don't think Jordan Akins or Jordan Thomas are the long-term answer there. All right, we got the Houston Texans at 14. Let's go to number 13 in our power rankings here. We've got the Los Angeles Chargers. Look, you're in, you're out. Maybe there's some Super Bowl buzz around this team, and they never really pan out. I feel like I've been listening to you too much about the, the Chargers. You have been, because I do like you've them. Been, you had them at, they had them at top 10 at one point. I did. And then you came back to Earth because you realized how crazy that I slid was. down a little bit, so yeah. 13 seems reasonable. I, they didn't really lose much. They didn't bring in a whole lot either. I mean, they the, look at kind of their additions. I love getting Mike Pouncey. That's a big deal there. Not included as Forrest Lamp, who I thought was the best guard last year in the sure. NFL draft. Now he comes in, should have gone around one. It was a steal, was hurt. Now he's back. You know, you lose Antonio Gates, but Hunter Henry was a better player last year. This means a more featured role for him. The guards are not a big loss. Maybe Corey Toomer is a notable one. I love getting Gerwin James to help out that back end. As long as Phillip Rivers is not turning the ball over a ton, like he kind of did at times last year, I think it's fair to call the Chargers 
the best team in the AFC West right now, Cam. On paper, sure. Now, we'll see how they fare. I, I think you've got to see better play overall and more yards per carry out of guys like Melvin Gordon. But the offensive line should be a lot better. So, I think if you look at teams that missed the playoffs last year, at least in the AFC, Cam, I kind of think the Chargers are the best fit. Which I, is weird for me to say out loud. Well, they're just built to win in the modern NFL, Tom. They got a secondary that is as good as all get out, and they got a pass rushing duo in Melvin Ingram and Joey Bosa. That's how you beat the Tom Brady's and the Aaron Rodgers of the world. Mm -hmm. And I think if the Chargers can get consistency on offense, so no injuries, a good offensive line, run block effectively. Always a big out. if, though, yeah? Yeah, big time. All right, so we got the Chargers there at 13. Let's summarize the list so far real quick. We've got the Colts, Dolphins, Jets, and Cardinals as the bottom four teams, followed by the Browns, Bills, Bengals, and Giants, 28 through 25. Bears, Bucks, Ravens, and then the Seahawks, 24 through 21. Towards the midway point here, we got the Redskins, the Broncos, the Raiders, and the Detroit Lions. And then 16 through 13, Chiefs, Cowboys, Texans, and Chargers. All playoff teams that if they miss the playoffs, you might hear some buzz about the head coaching staff. Maybe not so much for the Chargers and maybe the Chiefs, but Cowboys and Texans, I think, could definitely be on the hot seat there. All right, let's go to number 12 in our rankings, getting closer and closer to the top. We've got the Carolina Panthers. And a good year back in 2017 made the playoffs. Didn't go very far, but... You know, they got DJ Moore now. They signed CJ Anderson. Help things out. I'll make note here. We have 12 teams left. All but three of them are in the NFC. That's stacked right there. So the What Panthers, does that tell you? The Panthers are going to be a good football team. I mean, they're going to be a team that I think is pretty much always going to be in the top 15 of our power rankings as we do these each week during the regular season. I love getting CJ Anderson. I don't think the secondary has actually been fixed like the Panthers are hoping for. They brought in Ross Cockrell. They brought in Denor Searchy. They lost Kirk Coleman, whatever. They drafted uh, uh, Dante Jackson, who I don't love. They drafted Rashawn Golden, who I also don't love at all. So the secondary is the concern for me for the Panthers. But I, I, I tweeted this from the chat sports account today. DJ Moore brings them a 1,000-yard receiver. Since 2005, Cam, they had a one receiver, not named Steve Smith, who did that. That was Kelvin Benjamin. Yeah. So hopefully he can give you some more ups in the passing game. I like the one-two punch of Anderson and McCaffrey. The Panthers are, again, going to be a team that wins 10 or 11 games. But much like last year, that's going to put them on the playoff bubble. Yep. I think that I Makes think sense. they're going to find a way to get in. But tough NFC South, especially if the Bucks bounce back, someone's got to finish last. If the Panthers, even if the, I mean, you could see a start with the Panthers win like eight games and they're last in the NFC South. I don't think that that's going to happen. But that's just kind of the you know a potential concern for Carolina. It's a good division. All right, we got Carolina at 12. Let's go to number 11 here in our rankings. A team that is. Certainly gaining a lot of steam here in terms of PR, hype, Vegas odds, all this stuff. The 49ers, 6-10 and 10 last year. Jimmy G, the franchise in town now, made some additions. Richburg at center, Sherman, uh, a couple others as well, Jerick McKinnon. I am very curious how people feel about, about the Niners being 11. Like, like I, again, I, I think this team has the upside to be a team that makes the playoffs. They maybe, maybe make some noise in the postseason. But I do just still have some potential concerns about the Niners. And now you've got more tape on Jimmy Garoppolo. How does he fit and how does he grow as a player now that teams have maybe a better idea of how to stop him? He had a lot of passes that could have been picked off that, work, that weren't. I'm sure those will, will come back down a little bit. But you could see some more turnovers there. How does the offense look? How does the defense look? I still think they're, not looking, they're lacking a couple of key impact players. So I'm not going to put them top 10 yet, Cam. Mm -hmm. I have a team that jumped them from our last round. I didn't love their draft necessarily either. And they, they didn't quite improve the way that I thought they could have. It wasn't a bad draft, but just kind of average overall. Yeah, it was a decent draft there for San Francisco. And for a team that went 6-10 and 10 a year ago and has the 7th best odds to win the NFC and all this stuff, 11th mm -hmm. in our rankings isn't so bad. So mm -hmm. we've got the Niners there at number 11. Let's go to the top 10. And we'll start things off with the Tennessee Titans like this team a lot, Tom. So there are two ways to look at the Titans right now. First way is to look at it in terms of like their point differential. They are the obvious regression candidate. They got blown out of a bunch of games, won a bunch of narrow ones. They're a team that should have, that should in reality, should have won like six or seven games last year. But I truly believe that Mike Malarkey held this team back. You hate him yeah, so I, much. He's just not good. <laughs> like, I, I gave him way too much benefit of the doubt when he was first hired in terms of his, of his second year. 
he, he's a disaster head coach. He never should have been hired. We'll see how Mike Vrabel fares. He's a little bit raw as a head coach, but NFL teams are very high on him. The Titans landed him. We'll see how that goes. So I am willing here, Cam, to buy into Tennessee. I think that the coaching changes on offense are going to be great for Marcus Mariota. Now, he has to improve as well, but I think going away from Mike Blarkey and that outdated offense that was just bad overall is going to be a big boost. And I think that their draft, led by Rashawn Evans and Harold Landry, is going to be a big, big boost as well, Cam. I, I, I believe in the Titans. I think they can make some noise, no doubt about that. All right, Tennessee there at number 10 in our rankings. Let's go to a number 9 here. The Pittsburgh Steelers. So, Tom, you're with me in keeping this team a little low. I recently talked about my personal rankings on my morning show, and I have the Steelers around this range. Uh, as long as Big Ben is healthy, they're going to win at least 10 games. As long as he doesn't, you know, suddenly become Jacksonville Jaguars, Big Ben every game. But Pittsburgh, how much better do they actually get? And I think that if they were in the NFC – they would be a playoff bubble team. Now, in the AFC, I think they're pretty much safe there, but they brought in Morgan Burnett. They brought in John Bostick. Those are nice additions there. I'm, I'm not upset about losing, you know, Gay or Mike Mitchell or even really Martavis Bryant all that much. Yeah. I didn't love their draft. That's a big concern for me. I mean, Terrell Edmonds was a massive reach. I thought James Washington would be a nice player for them. But Rudolph and Chucks there are going to be developmental guys. They're, they're not going to play right away. They have, like, four strong safeties now in Burnett. Mark Allen, Sean Davis, and Terrell Edmonds. So who's going to play deep safety? I don't know. Maybe it ends up being Sean Davis. but Or I think they, just, they said that Burnett's going to play that role. So Pittsburgh is a great football team. They're going to be among the top Super Bowl contenders because they're in the AFC. But they are, they are behind the Patriots and, of course, the Jags because the Jags beat their butts last year. Oh, yeah. We'll get to the Jaguars. Let's go to number eight here in our rankings. And we've got the Green Bay Packers, a team that didn't make the playoffs a year ago, mostly because, well, Aaron Rodgers got hurt. Yeah, Rodgers is back, so they're a playoff team. As long as Aaron Rodgers is healthy, this is a team that is going to be among the favorites in the NFC North and a Super Bowl contender as well. I think in the top nine, Cam, all these teams at least harbor somewhat realistic Super Bowl aspirations. The secondary was drastically overhauled this offseason. Devon House stays, Shermon Williams comes in. They bring in Jair Alexander. They, they bring in Josh Jackson. A lot of corners. I think you can see someone maybe like a Quentin Rollins get shopped as well mm -hmm. at some point. Demarius Randall leaves, Morgan Burnett leaves. This is a, a solid football team and a great one when Aaron Rodgers is healthy. Even without him for a good ch chunk of the year, they still won seven games, and Brett Hundley was terrible. So I think Green Bay, even though it's, you know, some people don't like Aaron Rodgers because of his attitude, because they were bad last year without him, this is a team that is going to have Super Bowl aspirations. Whether or not they make it, I'm not quite sure on. By the way, if the Packers don't make the playoffs, or even if they go one and done early in embarrassing fashion, I think you could see the end of the Mike McCarthy era in, in Green Bay. Stay tuned for that. We got the Packers at number eight. Mention the Jacksonville Jaguars. Here they are at number seven, the ultimate Big Ben killers, if you will, sweeping the Steelers a year ago. And for Jacksonville here, I'll tell you what, it all comes down to Blake Bortles. You mentioned earlier that the Texans were the ultimate low floor, high ceiling team. Mm -hmm. Is Jacksonville kind of the opposite? the high floor, lower ceiling team. Now, that floor is pretty high. Yeah, I see you. But I, I just don't think they can win a Super Bowl with Blake Bortles. I just don't think he's good enough. I don't think he's good enough to make the plays where they absolutely need him to. The defense is once again great, and I guess we saw teams like Denver do it with terrible quarterback play. I love getting Andrew Norwell. They'll have success on the ground again. But when it's crunch time and the Jags need a game-winning drive down six in the fourth quarter against the Patriots, is Blake Bortles going to lead him on that drive? He was very close. He was close, Last but it year. didn't happen. It didn't happen. And that was You're the right. best we've seen from Blake Bortles. Horseshoes hand overall. grenades. So I just I have doubts about Blake Bortles, and that's the big concern for me. All right, Jacksonville there at number seven here. Let's take a look at the next team on our list. At number six, the Atlanta Falcons. Made the playoffs a year ago. Pretty good draft, balanced roster. I like this team. The Falcons, I think, have the most complete roster in the NFL, factoring in all the positions and not overly weighting quarterbacks, for example. But Steve Sarkeesian's there, Cam. You know how I feel about Sark. I am yeah, not I like a fan. Yeah. I, I, I think he, he hamstrung that offense last year. Now you bring in a good guard in Brandon Fusco. Now you'll, you do lose Taylor, Ga or Taylor Gabriel. You bring in a better player in Calvin Ridley. This offense should be the best offense in the NFL, and if it's not... I'm blaming Steve Sarkeesian. The defense would once again be fantastic. The Falcons should be 
one of the best teams in the NFC. They should have won one Super Bowl at least from the past two years. Obviously, the big one there. But they should have competed more than, than, than they did last season. Mm -hmm. Throw Julio Jones the damn ball in the red zone, and you'll have more success. Their consistent refusal to, to even look his way is mind-boggling to me. So the Falcons should be, frankly, they should be one of the top three teams in the NFL, at least. But they're number six because I don't trust Steve Sarkeesian whatsoever. All right, we got the Falcons there at six. Let's go to number five now, the New Orleans Saints, a team that, I'll tell you what, is going to be in the Super Bowl conversation for the next couple of years here, Tom. Mm -hmm. And we'll take a look at the card here. They bring in Patrick Robinson, Demario Davis, big-time additions, and Drew Brees, it's one last push with him. Yeah, because they gave away their future first-round pick. Uh, we have ripped on the Saints draft class, mostly me. The good news is, Saints fans, I still love your overall roster. You, you're going to have a guy, Mark Stafford, you hope becomes an elite edge rusher. I like getting Cam Meredith. Ben Watson from Kobe Fleener is an upgrade, I think, because Kobe Fleener's been pretty bad. The defense overachieved in a big, big way last year, so you went out and you added guys to help you avoid a regression there. So I think the Saints are one of the best teams in the NFL, obviously. Yeah. They might be my pick to make it to the Super Bowl this year, Cam. I haven't decided yet. Way too early for that. It's too early for that. We'll see how the things look in the preseason. We'll see you in August about yeah. that. But I think they were my pick last year, and they broke my heart. Marcus Williams, please recover from that game. But I think the Saints are firmly in their Super Bowl window. As long as Drew Brees plays well, at least what he was last year, which I don't think there's going to be a drop-off there, the Saints are going to be a dangerous team that no one wants to play. All right. Not that, that you want to play any of these top, top NFC teams in general. New Orleans there at number five. All right, let's real quick summarize our list so far presented by Auto List. We got the Colts, Dolphins, Jets, and Cardinals in the bottom four there. Browns, Bills, Bengals, and Giants next up, followed by the Bears, Bucks, Ravens, and Seahawks, Redskins, Broncos, Raiders, and Lions, Chiefs, Cowboys, Texans, Chargers there at number 13, Panthers, 49ers, Titans, and Steelers, then the Packers, Jags, Falcons, and Saints. All right, let's go into number four here. An AFC team, probably the final one on our list here, Tom. It in fact, is it the is final the final one. On one. New England, the Patriots. Kind of an interesting draft. I'm not a fan of it. Didn't like their first round, but these are the Patriots. This is Tom Brady, and this is the AFC East that absolutely stinks. So with that, the Patriots are by default going to win the number one seed, right? I mean, probably. I mean, they're going to be the Patriots. They're, they're going to win 12 or 13 games. Worst case, probably is, is 11, as long as Tom Brady stays healthy. I, again, I didn't love their draft, but the Patriots overall, they are a fantastic football team. I trust Bill Belichick. I trust Tom Brady. I'd actually still be a little bit surprised if they don't end up being the team that represents the AFC in the Super Bowl because it's the Patriots. Right. I know it's boring and it gets a little frustrating that it's always the Patriots almost every, every single year, but they're good for a reason. They're, they are very consistent. At some point... The dynasty will end. I just don't think it's going to be this season. All right, New England's at four. Let's go to number three here. The L.A. Rams, they won the offseason. Tom, they, in a couple yeah. of sentences here, what do you think of them? I like them a lot. I am a little curious to see how all these new pieces fit together. How do they all get along and how, do, how does the, the locker room handle that? Because I think that's often an underrated type of thing that we easily overlook. But you brought in Sue. You brought in Cook, Slee, Peters, and you kept Joyner. Good stuff. Skill and on paper... They're really with the Rams, maybe the best team in the NFL on paper. Now, we'll see how teams adjust to year two of Jared Goff. I call it year two because the first year did not count. That was the Jeff Fish year. Does not count. They didn't bring in a ton of impact guys on, on, uh, on the draft because they didn't have many early picks. But the Rams, okay. the expectations are very high right now. They're going to be a popular pick, I think, to make it to the Super Bowl next year. All right, let's go to two in our rankings here. The Minnesota Vikings made it to the NFC Championship game a year ago, got blown out by Philadelphia. Kirk Cousins is in town, Tom. They'll be a factor. It is Super Bowl or bust for the Vikings. If they don't make it, then it's going to be a down year because that's the expectation around with Kirk Cousins right now. If they don't have Kirk, and if, if Kirk doesn't get into the, to, to the Super Bowl, it's going to be viewed as a failure. So I like where Minnesota's at overall. Guard is a big concern for me, but overall, I love this Vikings team. They are once again going to be a, a strong playoff contender and Super Bowl threat. All right, and then finally at number one, the Philadelphia Eagles, the champs. we got to give them respect, Tom. They Put some it. respect on the Philadelphia Eagles. This team is built to last. They won the Super Bowl with their backup quarterback. So, yeah, this team's not going to go anywhere. I love Carson Wentz's upside and his ability. He'll come back healthy at some point. When that happens, the Philadelphia Eagles are going to again be in the top of the NFC and the NFL overall. Until they lose a game, they are number one team in the NFL. 
All right, That's there you respect. go, folks. Respect big time there. And we thank you for watching this program. We thank Autolist for sponsoring. Head on to Autolist.com. I'm Cam Rogers. That's Tom Downey. We'll see you.